Hey, 42 here. In 1796, Edward Jenner, a local doctor in Gloucestershire, England, became obsessed with milkmaids. He started observing them. He said it was for medical research, but we've all heard that one before. But after a while, he started to notice something peculiar. All the milkmaids were immune to smallpox, a highly virulent and common killer disease at that time. He suspected this was because milkmaids often contracted the relatively mild disease of cowpox first, which somehow made them immune to smallpox. Jenna carried out a famous experiment on an eight-year-old boy and purposely injected him with a small amount of the cowpox virus. As Jenna had hypothesized, the boy was now immune to smallpox. He was so confident in his findings that he even carried out the same experiment on his 11-month-old son. Two years later, Jenner published his research, coining the word vaccine, from Latin vacca meaning cow. Of course, because the Catholic Church were, as usual, intimidated by Jenner's progressive thinking, they launched a smear campaign to ridicule him and his research. Luckily for millions and millions of lives, Pragmatism eventually prevailed, and in 1803, Jenner was awarded government funding as the usage of vaccines became widespread throughout Europe and the US. All was going very well for a couple of hundred years. But then, in 1998, a former British doctor and medical researcher called Andrew Wakefield published a research paper claiming that there is a strong link between vaccinations and the onset of autism. Six years passed by and his research had led to rumours all around the world that vaccines cause autism. To make matters worse, numerous Hollywood celebrities got caught up in it all and publicly spoke out about how they believe vaccines are linked to autism. And as we all know, celebrities are the fountain of all knowledge. Yes, I did just insult myself. But since Wakefield's claims were getting a lot of media attention around the world, other scientific researchers and investigative journalists started to test Wakefield's claims and dig a little deeper. It turned out that all of Wakefield's research was entirely unsubstantiated, and a lot of it had been entirely falsified. And then a journalist for the Sunday Times discovered that Wakefield had undisclosed financial conflicts of interest. Naughty naughty. An investigation ensued against Wakefield. It turned out he had also heavily mistreated autistic children during his experiments. Eventually, he was completely discredited and barred from practicing medicine in the UK ever again. Of course, the news of all of this didn't get a speck of media attention, unlike the story that vaccines do cause autism. So the world was left in the dark, still believing in his fake research. So, to put it simply, this whole vaccine autism rumour that spread like wildfire and still perpetuates today was born out of lies and fake research. So then, it's pretty clear where I'm going with this video, but let's dig a little deeper. Because despite all of this happening in 2004, a recent poll revealed that 18% of Americans still believe vaccines cause autism, including their president. So, how does a vaccine work anyway? Well, a vaccine is basically an expansion pack for our immune system. When harmful microbes enter our body, our immune system kicks into action and releases antibodies, little battleships that hunt down the invading virus or bacteria and exterminate it. But that's not all your body does. It also records a memory of the configuration of that specific pathogen, and also the best way to denature it in the future. Because every pathogen is different, a different approach is needed to kill it. A vaccine contains either a very small and safe amount of the actual pathogen which it's intended to protect you from, or a pathogen which is already dead. Once the inactive pathogen has been injected into our body, an immune system response is triggered, and it learns everything about that pathogen and remembers it. So if it ever comes across it again in greater numbers, our immune system is well prepared. Countless studies have shown that this is a perfectly safe way to immunize your body against future infections. There has been literally no scientific evidence found suggesting that vaccines are in any way unsafe. Uh, some complain of feeling ill after a vaccine, but unless by coincidence, they're not actually sick. It's just because there are side effects to our immune system being triggered. 
and these side effects happen to be the same symptoms as the flow, uh, such as excessive sweating, muscle cramps and headaches. So if it's not the active ingredient in the vaccine, the inactive pathogen, that's allegedly causing autism, then what is it? Well, a vaccine does contain a small number of ancillary ingredients. Uh, these additions are simply there to stimulate your immune system and help it to do its job against a newly introduced pathogen. So could these strange chemicals cause us any harm? Well, it's very, very unlikely. All the commonly used vaccine ingredients are completely natural and can already be found in the human body, such as aluminium and gelatin. The most controversial vaccine ingredient has been an antiseptic and preservative called Fiomersal, which was the main ingredient that people believed was responsible for causing autism. Although no scientific evidence could ever be found that supported these claims. However, due to public concern, Fiomersal was immediately removed from all vaccines across the whole of Europe and America, so it's actually no longer a concern. So have any studies been carried out to specifically test the link between vaccines and autism? Well, yes, quite a few actually. Over 50 independent, evidence-based studies have been conducted, specifically investigating the supposed link. And all of them concluded that there was no evidence linking the two. Furthermore, some studies have found that having a large amount of vaccines in a very short space of time as an infant, which a lot of people worry about, has no negative side effects. A growing number of people are refusing to vaccinate their children against deadly diseases. But doing this doesn't just affect them, it's also incredibly dangerous for the rest of humanity, because it increases the chances of pathogens multiplying between hosts, mutating, and becoming a global pandemic. So yeah, just think about that next time you base your entire scientific consensus from an infographic you saw on Facebook. It's easy to see why some people are so eager to make the connection. Autism is typically identified in children between the ages of 2 and 3, however symptoms can appear between 1 and 2. Although it differs from country to country, these crucial years are typically when children are given the majority of their major vaccines, such as measles, mumps and rubella. So the timeframes line up perfectly to shove the blame onto vaccines. And when backed up by a singular scientific study, albeit falsified, it's easy to see how this rumour quickly grew into something quite large. But if you still adamantly believe the tweets of celebrities, a post your friend shared on Facebook, and the results of a singular study that has been proven entirely untrustworthy, over mountains and mountains of evidence brought forward by people who have dedicated their entire lives to the study of medicine and vaccines, then I guess there's little else I can do to change your mind. If you really do need further clarification, then I can only suggest that you visit HowDoVaccinesCauseAutism.com. It truly was an eye-opener for me. Thanks for watching. If we go back to the Middle Ages or even all the way back to the Roman Empire, was life ever any better than it is right now? then you could be an extraordinarily intelligent person, possibly even genius level.